And it's going. Oh, I should have had my lighter <laughs> knife. I've got a special little lighter knife uh, for getting bitches' panties wet. Hello and welcome to Between Two Sheets with Tyler Hall and Jesse Swift. Tonight we'll be talking about uh, the sexual orientation of comic book characters in today's day and age. Hey guys, welcome to the Fan Splash Podcast. It's been a while since I caught it there. Um, it, it has been a little bit of a while, but uh, we've been more consistent than we have been in the last year and a half. So. Oh god, gee, he's trying! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is he squaring his shoulders? <laughs> How about that short game? <laughs> I'm a bit of a stifler, me seeks. Well, he wrote me into this. Well, he wrote me into this. Well, he wrote me into this. Hi, Mr. Me Hey, guys, what's Look going on? It's Tyler Hall and Jesse Swift with the Fan Splash Podcast here to give you another very special edition of a very special podcast. Yeah, let's uh, and a growing jazz. network. Uh, since th- we did our last podcast, we actually have a new subdivision of our network. Burr, burr, burr. Our... <laughs> fan, fan, fan! It is our Fan Splash game channel, uh, <laughs> of all things. Yes. Um, so hopefully we can convince some, uh, homies to do some videos. We already have stuff. close to 30 members on that page. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it, which, which, what may seem insignificant to most people is actually a pretty big deal to us. Um... Growing this, community. You, viewer, watching, do you have a page of 30 followers? Yeah, I didn't think so, so fuck you. Maybe you do. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you do. If you do. Maybe you have like a... Link, link our page. Butt scratchers are us on Instagram. It's got like 10 million followers. Back scratchers! Like, fuck, what are we doing wrong? Back scratchers! Butt scratcher! <laughs> um, well, I think we should probably start with topics. So, uh, kicking it off, uh, something that... We have very, very, very rarely talked about on the show, even though it's been oncoming for a long time, because we've had nothing to really talk about other than some a little bit of casting news. But we have our first trailer for Detective Pikachu. Um, I'm slow, because I clicked on the article, and I didn't realize it said trailer. I just said Detective Pikachu, blah, 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 blah. And I clicked it. I saw the poster. I was like, okay, cool. And I, I left the page. I didn't realize that directly under the poster was the fucking trailer. Was, oh, really? So I came back to it like three hours later. I was like, oh, Yeah, I saw it. I mean, I saw it yesterday. Yesterday was the day it came out, right? So yeah. I saw it the same day, but I, I was sort of the same thing. I was like, uh, well, I was really busy. So I was like, uh, I got to wait on this. But I finally fucking saw it. I was walking. I walk in between stores for work. And uh, I watched it and... Wow, not at all what I expected. Pikachu. Like right off the bat, um, what do you think about the uh, Pokemon design? It took watching it three times. Did you watch it three times? Oh, I've watched it like twenty times now. Really? I've, I'm almost on repeat on it. I have this weird obsession that I can't describe with the trailer, and I keep watching reviews of people reacting and watching it too. you I, I, I like to feed off people's energy. You know, when I don't know how to feel about something, and I'm like middle of the road. I feed off, like, the general consensus. You're, like, where I am with that Joker makeup test. Like, I have just watched that so many times, I can't even count it. Uh, Detective Pikachu, I only watched the one time, but um, from what I saw... I was watching at least two more times. No, I'm definitely going to watch it more. That's that's not an issue. It's just, uh, you know what we forgot to do this time? Play some background music. That really worked last time. Oh, anyway. I'll, I'll get something better. Um, uh, so... <laughs> He's gonna cue up the music, and I, I guess I'll talk about the trailer a little bit. Yeah, what are, what are your um, thoughts? Are you looking forward to? Is is this okay for our first live action Pokemon movie? Something that we've wanted for twenty years. In it is, and, and and what's so weird about it is, yes, it is the first live action Pokemon movie. The characters are completely unique, right? Oh, there we go. We're tr- they're trying to kick our lighting out. Um, we forgot to pay the bill. God damn it! <laughs> Think now, network. <laughs> Mr. Bader is back. Mr. Bader. We're back in the studio, if you didn't know, by the way. Um, this is a new studio from Think Now. What are the chances this song at least instrumentally shows up in the movie? I don't think that it will. Uh, instrumentally? 
Kind of like dun, how the Teen Titans yeah. did in the, in the Just like, Gun. even if it's the end credits or open credits. Dun, 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 part, part of it has to be in there. Yeah, part of it has to be in there. But we have been waiting, yeah, upwards of uh, since 96 for this. So it's been like 22 years since that we've been waiting for a uh, live action Pokemon movie. And here it finally is. And do the Pokemon look a little weird? To me, he says when you pause it and zoom in on the Charizard that you can see the scales or whatever, they all look like. They're, it's a strange texture. It's kind of it's all fuzzy. Well, it looks like um, Christopher Robin. <laughs> they, it looks like the the Winnie the Pooh characters and Christopher Robin to me. Somebody that's what they it look to like. Paddington as well. They said Paddington. It's, it's like there a you live go. action. Um, they're like live action plush dolls. And Do you I can't know see that. what Paddington has on it. A consistent one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Paddington two. Paddington 2. Yes. Paddington 2 is actually the highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes because of um, rating count. Wow. Uh, because t- it had... I never finished the first one, but I, I, I like the first one. I, I heard they're the both one. great. I heard they're fantastic. Interesting from a movie that I never wanted to see and never thought I'd see, but I only saw it because of the... Pikachu is played by Deadpool. He is. And... Uh, Shouldn't work. It's funny enough because I wondered, oh... Ryan Reynolds is going to play Pikachu in Detective Pikachu. So how's that going to work? Is he going to go, Pikachu, 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 Pikachu. Like, what were the dimensions of what he was going to do? Turns out he talks. Turns out it's Ryan Reynolds. Turns out our lights go out. God damn it. Keep talking. All right. <coughs> we could use a Pikachu right now. Um, use Thunderbolt. Ow, fucking asshole. You didn't have to use a solar beam. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a charge. You gotta charge that. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking we're, forward to We have digressed so far. Um, what, what, yeah, what do you feel about the, about the movie? It somehow looks great to me. And it's, it's just strange. Because the first time I watched the trailer, I was like, that could be fun. And I watched it again, and I was like, that looks adorable. And then I watched it like a third time. I was like, fuck it. You know what? I want this movie. I legitimately like actually want this thing. And I'm loving everything about it. I'm with you. Although I didn't give the uh, trailer multiple watches yet. I'm just like, wow, that is um entirely different from anything that I ever thought I would see with Pokemon. Ever. Ever. Like there are so many dimensions to Pokemon and so many different like the Mr. Storylines or games or anything that you go with in the Mr. Mind thing. The Mr. Mind bit was that genius. Was, but and then he jumped at him and he had the barrier up. Yeah. That was golden. <laughs> but who thought of this Detective Pikachu shit? And 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 we got there is what is Detective Pikachu based off of? Is this a game? It's, it was like a Nintendo DS game. Was it? Yeah, and Pikachu had a gruff, gravelly voice in it. Wow, I you know we could do a little research on it at some point. I I didn't know any of this. I thought Detective Pikachu might have been a Pokemon card <laughs> that they would have gone off of. Probably but. those too. Um, is there any other thoughts we got about it? Pokemon? But the guy comes out of Pokeball and I'm Bulbasaur. Ex- and I'm excited about it. I want to see it. Um, let there be light. All right, well, let's let's skip ahead to something you really want to talk about, something that you're looking forward to, something I feel like you might be excited, despite his marvelous thunder thighs, and that is Godzilla vs. King Kong has officially commenced production. The movie will come out in 2020. We still have Godzilla 2 to look forward to. Uh, the trailer slowly grew on me, but we have our first official synopsis. Let us read it off here in all its vague glory. Oh, okay. Um, in a time... Hang on, let me get a trailer voice. Away. In a time, in a time when monsters walk the earth, humanity's fight for its future sets Godzilla and Kong on a collision course that will see the two most powerful forces of nature on the planet collide in a spectacular battle for the ages as Monarch embarks on a perilous mission into uncharted terrain and unearths clues to the Titan's origins. A human conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures, both good and bad, from the face of the earth. Forever. Forever. Well, as you can see, I am a pretty big Godzilla fan. I always have been. 
Uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla is one of my favorites. What's up, Godzilla? Uh, when I was about six years old, I got the uh, 35th anniversary edition of King Kong vs. Godzilla. Shit, now it'd be the, like, 60th anniversary edition at this time. Um, but, uh, you know, I... Uh, I loved that movie. King Kong vs. Godzilla is still one of my favorite movies of all time. You know what? I yeah, might I put, that, I that might put it on my 10. list. Be it's got to go on my 10. We've, we're doing the, the 10 top movies of all time. I might have to put it on there. Um, so, being, a, being, being is... a huge fan of that movie and not loving the 2014 Godzilla film whatsoever... Bullshit. And not being a big fan of the uh, trailer for the uh, newest one. And having not yet seen Kong Skull Island, which is a huge fault of mine. I can't believe I haven't seen it. I've um, seen it like four times. Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, I'm hugely at fault for that. I, I And I can't believe that I haven't seen it. But, um... Am I still looking forward to this movie, even with uh, Godzilla's shit-ass ridiculous design and how much I hate how fucking fat he is? Like, why am I fat-shaming Godzilla? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's 2018. He can have big thighs. (laughs) And you have to love him, and if you don't love him, you're a fucking bigot. Um, I'm still very much looking forward to this movie. I'm so excited for it. I, I just... I've wanted this to happen in my lifetime, a reboot... I've wanted this reboot to happen ever since I was six years old and I saw King Kong vs. Godzilla for the first time. And, um, man, I am absolutely in love with this idea and, and I can't wait for it to happen. 2020 cannot come but soon enough. Before that, you are going to get Godzilla vs. Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah. Which is which should be awesome. I, d- don't let me take away from the thought. Just because I wasn't ecstatic by the trailer doesn't mean that I'm not going to be like going to see this movie opening night of just, course I'm just a be wet there. dream with your eyes open yes dude i mean godzilla versus all the other monsters is gonna be it's it's even if it's a bad movie there's got to be cool elements to it so of course i'll be there well, opening like, night you and agree of course with I'll me as it. much as you don't like the 2014 godzilla movie him ripping the jaws open of that other monster spitting fire down its throat and ripping its head off was amazing i think i got a good itself. analogy for the 2014 godzilla movie it's just like a Marvel Netflix series. There are very cool, very violent parts to those series, but they are so fucking boring. They're like watching paint dry. And that is what uh, Godzilla 2014 was like to me. Oh. I'll let you take that one because I'm going to have to take one uh, a little bit later. Just real quick, I'm excited. I like both the 2014 Godzilla and the Kong Skull Island movie. And I said that the post credit scene of Skull Island was my favorite post credit scene of that year. Marvel yeah, how about of all up. time? Yeah, possibly. It's up there. <laughs> so, so how about this thing, though? All right, so moving on to uh, more exciting stuff is we have not one, but now two Toy Story 4 announcement trailers. Which what is with that shit? We got one teaser trailer, and it was just like... Them all holding hands in the circle, and then there was the sport thing, and he was like, I don't belong here! I'm not a toy! And I was like, okay, is this what we get? That's bullshit. From the movie, and then we get another thing with a fucking angry bird and a Care Bear. So, you want to talk about that a little bit? You're an I don't care bear. <laughs> well, I just, the fact that it was, they're... It was a, it was a straight up Key and Peele sketch. And if it was from the movie, I would say that it's annoying, but the fact that this is their way of introducing the characters that they are going to... Because they will be in the movie. They're introducing these characters that are going to be in the movie with another little announcement trailer. Um, I like this. Because I, I don't know when off the top of my head, but Toy Story 4 is far away. It's not soon. So this just little teases and stuff like this, I think it's very appropriate. It's and, summer 2019. It's not that far away. Is it the uh, summer? That... I'm pretty sure it's summer 2019. I could be very, Tell very, 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 very... I could be very wrong. But um, I believe that it was just pushed back a year behind Incredibles 2. So originally... Oh, that is true. I originally, that. Toy Story 4 was supposed to come out when Incredibles 2 did. And Incredibles 2 was supposed to come out a year later. However, they switched the two. 
Now, given the fact that summer just fucking ended and it's already June almost Christmas. Yeah, it's already almost Christmas, dude. Like, June is not that far away in terms of relative time when you're an adult. Uh, they say that the uh, second like 50 no- years feel like the first 25, so I feel like November, we're both past 25. November would be too soon for a full trailer, I think, mm-hmm. when it comes out in June. Like, maybe January. Do you think we'll trailer. get, like, a real true teaser, though? Like, by the end of the week? Well, these are two- They've released two teasers, be- like, right off the bat after each other, like... One was yesterday and one was today. I, that's weird that they did the, the two. I don't know if they're going to do more. Maybe they have like a Deadpool marketing in mind where it's like, we're just going to keep having little things. Just throw a bunch of little things to make sure that you're always talking about Toy Story. It would be interesting. It would be unheard of and in, 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 in new in that, and weird. In that sphere of um, Especially for Toy genre. Story, but you don't really have to hype Toy Story. Toy Story was the first fully computer animated yeah. film and uh it has quite the following so and cast it's actually the first movie i ever saw in theaters i think it was my first theater movie too huh? um there's a little blurry area between toy story and phantom menace so i think it was toy story and then phantom menace like my first two movies well phantom menace would have been a couple years after that but uh i saw in the same year i saw Toy Story, and then Rumble in the Bronx. So, uh, <laughs> quite the genre shift. Anyway, uh, what do we think about these trailers? What do you What do you get from them? Do you Do you get enough hype for the Toy Story Four? Are you ready for it? So um, I was I was on the the fence when they announced Toy Story Four. I was kind of with most people, which was like a big eye roll. Like you kind of tied a bow on it, you know, like. Do Toy Story really... 3 was dark and fucked up, though. It was. But it's, it's just it's a great trilogy overall. And that's what I came back to. I was like, wait. They've had three good movies. Why should I think that this won't be good? Will you look up real quick when Toy Story 2 came out? Sure. You know what year? Because yeah, I, I want to think that Toy Story 1 came out in 95. Toy Story 2 came out in... 99. Toy Story 3 was 2010. So the first movie was. Or the. 95, 95, 99. 95, 99, 2010, and 2019. So 2 and 3 are 11 years apart. Okay. So this one is 9 years apart. Wow. It's not as far apart. I thought that three and four were more far apart than two and three, but they're not. Apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently, uh, um, we don't know our shit. How about so. this? Did you watch Buzz Lightyear of Star Command? Because I did. I actually did a little yeah. bit. Uh, I watched a decent amount of it. Is there a character from Buzz Lightyear of Star Command showing up in this movie? Well, we saw Zerg in Toy Story two. Yeah, but what is the little robot guy? You know who I'm talking about? The, the little, little robot guy in Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Oh, yeah. No. But did you, uh, you hear about this thing, though? You hear about this thing, though? Venom has made over... Oh, we're transitioning. We're transitioning. Right. That's transition. That's, that's a soft, that's a... soft transition. <laughs> um, treat that whiplash with some ice. Um, Venom has made over 700 million dollars coming right up on Deadpool which rounded out its worldwide box office at only like 743. That's the first Deadpool or Deadpool 2? Deadpool 2. Deadpool 1 made 900 million, right? Or 800 million. Uh I think it was about 800 million. Wow, two. Deadpool 2 did not make more money than Deadpool 1? No, it was right under it though. Not not Wow, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Now you know. So, uh not only is it Catching up to Deadpool 2, but it has surpassed both Justice League and Ant-Man and the Wasp. One of those films more surprising than the other, but regardless... I'm um, extremely surprised by actually both of them, because as negative as what the um, DC movies had been prior, uh, there were still solid runs in there... uh, 
Man of Steel and uh, Wonder Woman. And Suicide Squad had a big fan following. Like when you think about the Hot Topic people and shit like that. Suicide Squad did have a lot of people that liked it. I also believe so, Suicide Squad is the second highest grossing movie out of the DC franchise. So think about it. Um, how did Justice League not do tremendous? It should have made a billion dollars in sleep because of the IP. But there's so much negative. That is so uh, weird. It is. It is. Yeah, and that is just so absolutely insane to me. You got Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in a movie together. And Flash and Cyborg for the first time. And Aquaman. Um, and Venom. Venom. <laughs> Venom. 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 To a um, T. To a T. Venom. Wow. How fucking weird. Because. This guy. We, you know. We made a I'm bet. We, we never officialized the bet. But my bet was that Venom was going to. My bet was that Venom was going to win. Um. Both domestically and internationally. And nobody's talking about Halloween. Dan bet that uh, Venom was going to lose to Halloween domestically, but win internationally. And then... Uh, the argument was opening weekend versus worldwide total hole. Hall. Okay. And then uh, Jesse thought that opening weekend uh, Halloween, Halloween was going to do better both. And so I was like, no, Venom's both. And he's like, no, Halloween both. By the way, Halloween and lost Dan, by like three million. Just it's it's not that much, but I still won. If we were to have actually been able to get Dan in here and uh solidify that bet, uh this fucker would owe me money. <laughs> but uh no, am I surprised by how much Venom made? Oh, absolutely! I think my- there's there's no way it should have made as much money as it as it did. Um, <clears throat> the trailers did not make it look like it was going to be this fantastic movie. Granted, I liked it better than I expected to like it. That's I thought it was a better movie than than what I was going into. It was better than shit. Was it? <laughs> yes, it was better than shit. Was it lacking severely? Absolutely. Uh, could it have done a lot better under the actual Marvel threshold? A million times, yes. But was it a bad movie by any means? No, it wasn't a bad movie. I've, um, does it deserve the money over Justice League and Ant-Man and the Wasp? No, Ant-Man and the Wasp was a solid film. And Justice League, while it wasn't a fantastic film, should have been a easy cash grab. And so this Venom revenue... This box office fucking smash is crazy that it is creeping up to Deadpool 2. You could say there's been carnage at the box office. And and, and the final scene in Venom, spoiler alert, is the cringiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. So, (laughs) why? (laughs) But but that's not getting through (laughs) to the general audience. And that was my argument, is the general audience is going to go see Venom. And I was right. Um, My... I... I'm happy because that means Venom 2. That means we're going to get carnage on the big screen for the first time. And that's all that matters to me. I blew predictions because people were asking me how much I thought Venom's total haul would be. And I said definitely less than $500 million, max 400 to 450 Wow. And it's approaching... Uh, Double eight. that. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what really threw him for a loop is everyone thought it was winding down. They knew it was going to open up in China, but they didn't think it was going to do, you know, crazy big in China. I think maybe 30, 40 million did 111 in just China, $111 million. And that is the second biggest comic book opening in China. Wow. What was the biggest one? I don't know off the top of my head. I would think Infinity War. I, I would really think don't. maybe Infinity War or the original Avengers. Yeah, that's that would be my guess, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. I, I huh? just know that's insane. Wow. I think it's probably because Venom has, like, tentacles. and <laughs> So, <Okay>. um... <laughs> that's Japanese, you dumb fuck. Get your weeb culture right. Sorry. Uh, what do we got next? All right, so uh, this will be my chance to uh, take over a topic for a second. There is... A new, and it would presumably be the final trailer for Alita Battle Angel, and I'm going to slice it off. <laughs> um, I 
thought this movie looked pretty good from the get-go. The trailers for me just keep getting better. It looks like a man- manga? manga manga done correctly. Manga? Manga? Because uh, they've, I mean, they've tried Ghost in the Shell. They've tried um, Death Note. Have you recovered from that yet? No. Okay, it's not okay. Uh, it is- I'll let Netflix take the hell on that again if they do it with a series. But they fucked that movie up really hard. Anyway, uh, it's just there's been a lot of trash as far as anime adaptations have gone, and the funny thing is I've heard that even when Japan tries to adapt their own shit, they can't do it right. Because I heard the Attack on Titan live action movie was just abysmal because they didn't. Have I've heard there are it. great Gundam movies, and their Death Note is actually really good. Yeah, I, I now I'm yawning. I need some of your coffee. Um, there's I need I'm not gonna. I need oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, you can't go wrong with Christoph Waltz most of the time. Uh, you think, but this movie looks so fucking dumb, dude. I hate you. I think this movie looks fantastic. I think it looks original. I think visually it is super stylized and it's such an interesting combination to put James Cameron with Robert Rodriguez, two very, very different directors, uh, stylistically. That is a very extremely, extremely interesting combination, by the way. Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron. Holy shit. You have like the highest budget shit and like the lowest tier. Like, but you budget. have the guy that can do shit with a super high budget and a guy that can make gold with a super With a thousand budget. bucks. And uh, by the way, if you haven't seen, I'm a couple seasons behind, but if you haven't seen the From Dust Till Dawn series, that is personally overseen by Robert Rodriguez and it is fantastic. Uh, yeah, um, big, uh, he's heavily involved, obviously, with the Sin City. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And James Cameron, Avatar. However, obviously. that movie, Alita, doesn't look interesting to I, me, man. Like, I, I you think, keep going. Keep going. Talk about your fucking I just trailer. Think, I think they actually... Talk about great. your and trailer. Like Talk about your trailer. With the bottles go up in the air, and she, like, kicks both of the guy's faces. And it just stylizes the word that I keep coming back to. It reminds me... Of what I enjoy about Zack Snyder films. Maybe the story's lacking. And maybe they're too much for us. But if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just... Unbiasedly, I think it might fall under the guilty pleasure category. I think I will be entertained, and that's what I'm looking for. I'll go see it with you, but man, I'm fucking not excited for it. It looks so dumb to me. It looks so dumb. I saw Venom opening night thinking that I was going to barf into a trash That's bag. right. That's right. And you know what? I went and saw A Star is Born thinking it was going to be the stupid garbage chick flick. And, uh, dude, I teared up. <laughs> so, uh... Well, I went into Bohemian Rhapsody thinking it was going to be great, and it was. It was. <laughs> so, um, you know what's funniest about rocked. that movie? To defer for a second before we transition, that movie. While I was watching it, the first forty-five minutes to an hour, I was like, "Yeah, I get why this was critically." And then, holy shit, it changes. And I'm like, "He gets a mustache." <laughs> the signature of Freddie Mercury look really sells the whole movie. And then you're like, God damn, this is a beautiful film. This is a beautiful film. It's so good. I can't wait to see it again. Anyway. How's that film doing, by the way? Uh, you know, I haven't I haven't been um, tracking. It's tracking. but Or I guess it's past tracking now. It's out. But I don't know what it's <coughs> currently at. It opened strong. I just remember it opened really strong. That's good. I'm happy for it. I don't... Um, That'd be something we could look up in between. But that's actually... Alita was actually the final topic because I wanted to end it on a high note. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned. What, what do we see in the next trailer? What do we see in the trailer? You're going to talk about it, right? You're going to talk about the trailer? We just, I talked about the trailer. I said I'm looking forward to it. The trailer was good. It just it, it showed a lot more. It showed, um, obviously, what seems to be like the finale piece that I didn't really know was coming. Because I don't know jack shit about Alita. Uh I just know it's a female cyborg robot. She's kicking ass. She's got a compelling story about an identity crisis and trying to figure out where she came from. Um, it looks it's it's a, it's female RoboCop, but more anime influence. I love RoboCop, so that is blasphemy to me. But I'd buy that for a dollar. We're gonna end on this topic. I wanted to add a new element to Fan Splash. So 
constantly we are changing our set to fan splash so granted our bodies are blocking a good portion mm -hmm. of what is in fan splash but if every time you said but we post a video and you could tell me all the differences between last video oh, and geez. this video with the set granted you can't see half the stuff because of our camera quality but just say oh there's this many more pops there's so and so and such and such and that and that we will give you a prop prize from the set that is a 100 percent guarantee i'll give you a prop prize from the set and it'll go to you all you have to do is email us the fansplash at gmail.com all the changes from the previous video to the set and you will receive a set prize Jesse, what yes, else do we got? That's it. That's the last topic. That's all I got for you guys. Um, but we will have another video coming up honoring the great, um, unfortunately, late Stanley. We want to dedicate a video. 95 is a good run, especially for a legend, so, man. We, think about that. He was born in, I believe, 1922. Mm -hmm. How much the world has changed since 1922 he literally, saw, he literally saw the uh american and the technological revolution so come back to us for our video on stanley in memoriam r.i.p and uh thanks for watching may the film be with you excelsior excelsior <laughs>